Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. President, uh, you've known me for 20 years, uh, and I'm sure you had a few occasions to curse my name. But I'm speaking to you today somehow as a changed man, not to oppose you, but to plead with you, to provide a voice on behalf of many people in my condition who do not have a voice. Cancer is the greatest pandemic this country is, is facing. And people are dying of bad policies and of bad laws which we can change. There are available cancer treatments which are not made available from a legal viewpoint. And I stand here as the expression of that problem. I was supposed to die many months ago and I'm here because I had the courage of taking illegal treatments in Italy in the form of bicarbonate of sodium, and here in South Africa in the form of cannabis, marijuana, DACA. Otherwise, I would be packed with morphine and I would not be able to speak to you, Mr. President. On November last year, the, the South African National Cannabis Working Group presented to the Minister of Welfare these four volumes, which represents the proposed new policy of your government, Mr. President. What this, paper, what, what this paperwork stands for is the proposition that there is no rational argument for continuing to deprive medical marijuana to people like me who need it. It is a crime against humanity not to allow that to take place. In the, in the galleries is uh, Advocate Shrad, uh, Shardan Ford, a formidable opponent. He has instruction to take us to court, challenging the constitutionality of all the laws which prohibit the use of medical marijuana and marijuana for commercial and industrial purposes. I've played with him not to, because this is the policy of the government and ought to be implemented. There does not have another TSC litigation type on the blood and tears of the suffering people of South Africa. I have published yesterday, and I will be introducing tomorrow, a bill, a simple bill, to enable doctors to make decisions with respect to terminal cases of, of cancer and other diseases returning to doctors uh, the discretion that they used to have and of which they've now been deprived of, and giving them the discretion to prescribe innovative systems, uh, such as medical marijuana, bicarbonate of sodium, or many other therapies which are available out there. They only in respect of facilities which are so authorized and they're under the control of the government. It's an enormous opportunity for this country. Medical tourism is something on which we can make some real income for the country, as we can with hemp, with marijuana for commercial industrial purposes. The, Ch the Chinese government is making huge investments on hemp as a fabric and as a, as a, as a construction material. And we need to turn the page. I admire our Minister of Health. He has got guts, backbone, and other male pertinences which are required in his job. And yes, we need to turn the page. The pandemic of cancer does have a connection with, carb with, with sugar and the carbohydrates. And we need to have the core. I don't believe in a sugar tax. And prohibitionism and taxes don't work, but changing the mindset, going from prohibitionism to re-education and education at all levels, the way we eat, the way we are treated, the way we regain control of our bodies in making decisions on our treatment options, is the threshold through which, Mr. President, I believe we can build a healthier society. You, your government, and anyone who rules the country bears the incredible burden of transforming 
South Africans. We talk about transforming so that society. That's easy. We passed law. We've made a new South Africa. We now need to make. We now need to make the new South Africans. And the new South Africans undoubtedly need to be more. They need to be better educated. But they must also need. They also need to be healthy. Well, remember, I regret to tell you that your time has expired. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Speaker.